In this training video, we're going to look at tasks and different kinds of tasks. So the two different kinds of tasks used in Microsoft Project are manual schedule tasks and auto schedule tasks. So if we look at task one, I'm going to click on task one, and this task happens to be a manual schedule task. So how can I tell? It's got a little pin next to it. It's got a lighter blue bar and it tells me on the task tab, it's telling me it's manual scheduled. Now the idea behind a manual scheduled task is for the user to control the task the way they want to control it for their specific purposes. But what will happen then, Microsoft Project, if you ever wanted to use Microsoft Project's automated features, will then bypass the tasks that are manual scheduled. So for example, project start date, which is an automated feature, will not drive a manual schedule task. Now if we look at task two, which is an automated task, an auto scheduled, how can I tell? The task mode has got a little blue bar with a black arrow. There's a slightly darker blue bar for the task bar and on the task tab we can see it's an auto schedule task now auto scheduling takes away some of the flexibility of the task so it doesn't let you do whatever you want to do to the task but it then links to microsoft projects automated controls so when you've set your project up the automated task then will align itself to the automated controls. So for example, one of the automated controls that Microsoft Project has is a project start or finish date. So if I were to change the project start or finish date, that's going to affect the automated task, not the manual schedule task. So you might say, well, how was the start date for the manual schedule task set? The start date in this example was set by actually using a little drop down arrow next to the start date and choosing the 22nd. So that's the way the date was set for manual scheduling. So just to prove the point now that the auto features will only control the auto tasks and auto schedule tasks, I'm now going to change the project start date and only task two now will be affected because it's auto scheduled. So let's have a look. I'm not going to click on any particular task. I'm going to click below the tasks, project tab. Project information is where we go for a project start date. Now, if I change the project start date to say the 5th of June. Now the automated task, the date for the start date automatically came from the project start date. So as soon as I set it to auto schedule in, the start date of the 22nd was then coming from the project information. Well, now I've changed it to the 5th of June. That means the automated task is going to be affected and will move out accordingly to the new date. Let's have a look. And there we go. So the automated task has now moved out to the 5th of June, whereas the manual schedule task has remained in place. So that shows you that if you do go on the path of manual scheduling, that there is more flexibility in using tasks to make your projects work the way you want them to work, but it also takes away a lot of the features of Microsoft Projects controls. Whereas if you go in the design of an automated task, now all of a sudden you can use the automated controls within project, but you don't quite have as much flexibility as you would with a manual task. So there are pros and cons, and this is a big decision at the PID stage, which way you go, whether you go uh, tasks which are auto-scheduled or manual scheduled, but they need to be planned to your specific purposes. Now, if we look at some other projects I've got prepared and see how manual and auto-scheduling works with more tasks, if I, for example, go to another project I prepared, 
and this is going to be about just manual scheduled tasks in itself. So this time all of the tasks are manual scheduled. If I click and select all the tasks, I can now see they're all manual scheduled. Now if I change the project start date, it's not going to affect any of these tasks. Let's check. So project tab, project information, 6th of June. Or 5th of June, we use this example. Okay. So in effect, the start dates have remained as they were, and nothing's now moved to the 5th of June. That's because they're manual scheduled. If I look back at the project information, I've actually set it to the 5th of June, but the tasks haven't updated themselves to the 5th of June. So this is showing you that manual scheduling tasks do not link to some of the automated features within Microsoft Project. Now if I use the same example for automated tasks, so I'll go to View and I'll just my switch to my windows to find the same project with auto scheduled. These are now the all starting on the 22nd, lots of different tasks. If I now change the start date to the 5th of June, they all change automatically. So you can now see that auto scheduling is now giving me the ability to use Microsoft projects automated features now there's a lovely feature within microsoft project called constraints now constraints are used to put some information against the task if a task can't be performed on time or something goes wrong with supply chain or there's something there's an issue with a particular task so let's say in this case the task one which is design job specification can't happen on the new date of the 5th of June and needs to be delayed by 10 working days because of a certain issue. Now if I were to change the start date of the project, I can do that now with a constraint. So I don't have to now worry about changing the start date like I would with a manual. I'm now going to just let the constraint do it for me. So let's see the example. So to add a constraint, and I will go through this in detail in a, in a later video, I'm going to double click the first task. I'm going to go to the advanced tab. I'm going to just set a practice constraint in this example. We're going to say start no earlier than. And 10 working days from the 5th of June. So I need to work out 10 working days. So there's the 5th of June, 12th, 19th. So 19th in this example, if I click OK now, the task one has automated itself to the constraint because the constraint is an automated feature. And I have a little icon in the information area that tells me I have a constraint set against this task. The task duration has changed. The task finish date has changed. So by using an auto schedule task, I'm now allowing project to control some of my tasks when I set up areas that I want to make changes with. Well, if we look at how this would work with manual scheduling, it works slightly different. So I'm now going to go to manual scheduling and use a project I prepared earlier. Okay, I'm going to try the same example and put a constraint against task one as I did with the auto schedule tasks. So same idea, double click, advanced. Now if you look at the constraint type area, it's grayed out. So in effect, you are unable to use constraints with a manual schedule task. So this is the thought that needs to go into the planning of the tasks is if you want to use Microsoft Project's automated features, you then use auto tasks. If you want a lot of tasks where you have personal control of the tasks, you use manual schedule tasks. So this is very much a planning exercise to really think of the kind of tasks you need for your project. Now, I am also going to give you an example of where 
manual tasks could be very beneficial. So if I go to another project I prepared earlier, and this time it's all about a training schedule. So this training schedule happens to have three training courses that need to be done in, in 40 days. So all I've done to set this up was I grouped tasks two, three, and four together. Now grouping is a skill I went through in my step-by-step -step video for 10 steps to set up a project within Microsoft Project. So this was gone through then. Um, but the grouping what is a skill that then makes all these tasks, tasks two, three, and four, join themselves under the heading of training schedule. So they're all part of this big, long, black bar here. That's what they are. So I'm now going to see how I could fit three training courses within to a 40-day schedule by manually changing dates in Microsoft Project with manual schedule tasks. So say now, for example, task one, I want this to start on, we'll say, Monday the 5th of June. So that's now the first 10 days, and I want that to go on for 10 days, so I'll leave the finish date. The next one I want to start on the following Monday. So I'm now going to click the drop down arrow, choose another date. So, oh, let's make it the 19th. Let's, let's skip a week. So I'm going to go to the 19th. And now all of a sudden, manual scheduling is really allowing me to schedule these tasks as I want to schedule them myself. Go again. So we'll choose another date. So the 19th, we'll go to, this time we'll go to the 26th. And now all of our manual schedule tasks are scheduled the way we want them to be scheduled without linking the tasks together within the schedule that's been agreed within our 40-day schedule. So we can see our 40-day schedule was agreed from the 22nd of May to the 14th of July. Well, all three training courses have met that criteria. So this is a useful way of using manual scheduling. And one of the customers who I went to for consultancy training, they wanted this very activity to be undertaken. So they were a training company and they wanted to see project control, manual scheduling in this kind of way. So this was very beneficial to their particular business. But what this shows is the difference between manual schedule and auto scheduling and the thought that needs to be put in at the planning stage when using these particular tasks.